Hello everyone, uh, we've come down to Willow Lake on the Lynch Hill Complex for two nights, me and my son Daniel, in the summer holidays. We've baited a couple of margin spots and we've had a good look around like three or four different areas that look pretty good and one of them we've already got the fish start feeding down here. We've just seen a couple of fish sort of circling the area and then I see a, um, a good mirror come along and start flanking along on the bait. All we've done is put a few scoopfuls of boilies, a few scoopfuls of pellet down there and a little bit of hemp. So we can hopefully we can get a couple of spots going over the next couple of days and uh, show you a fish or two. Um, it's a lake that I've fished sort of several times in the past and I've had some good fish out of here. The fish in here are absolute stunners. So we're really looking forward to the session and uh, hopefully we can show you some ways that we use our bait and and some fish on the bank as well with a bit of luck. So as I say, it's uh, toward middle of August, getting towards the end of August. It's a great time of the year. The fish are packing the weight back on. They're on the feed. Uh, we've put a few mixers out as well, and we had a couple taken on the top, but then they sort of scared off a little bit. So I think we'll sort of concentrate on the bottom baits, um, just walking around and doing a bit of fishing in close. And also um, we've found a spot out at about 10 wraps, a little bit of gravel. It's probably about 12, 14 foot deep and we're going to put some bait on that as well and put a couple of rods on that tonight. So hopefully me or Daniel will be able to show you a fish. I found a nice spot. I suppose it's about nine or ten wraps. Uh, I measured it like by the place in a tig and just, uh, twig and just walking it out along the bank. It's about 40 yards. Um, I'm going to put like about 25 spoms on top. I've got a little mixture here of slop which is just boily, pellet, hemp, some pigeon conditioner. I've got all different size boilies in there. So I've got some 12s, some 22 millers, some 14s. Um, there's a kilo of stick mix gone in there as well. I put a kilo of stick mix just to make like all the different sizes in there. And uh, I'm gonna put a nice bit out because I've got two nights. I do fancy that they're going to get on it. Um, the spot that we've got sort of further down the bank, what we've been baiting that the fish are on, I think my Dan's going to fish there. He's going to stick a rod in there in a minute. Uh, they're already on him down there, so he's got a good chance. And I reckon tonight, with a bit of luck, they'll get on this lot here. I'll probably put a good 20, 20 to 25 spoms, even 30 spoms out on this spot, I've got two rods, literally two foot apart. The particle that I've got here has been sitting in my garden for about two weeks. Um, the hemp that I'm using, I cooked about two weeks ago. Um, I mixed it with some pigeon conditioner. It's just been sitting there in the heat in the back garden. And it's really got fermented now. It's really got a nice sort of twangy smell to it which I like, which I've used for years. I, I do like using fresh hemp, but if I can use it a couple of weeks, like cook it and leave it in the bucket for a couple of weeks, so it gets a little bit, gets a little twang on it. Not too much, just enough. Um, and I, I do find as if, especially on these gravel pits, these deep gravel pits, that attractor, um, you know, the fish find the bait easy. And where I'm doing it like a slop, with a bit of stick mix in it, all different size boilies. It really helps with the attraction. And when the fish do come in, what I'm hoping is um, it holds them a bit and gets more than one fish in there feeding, which hopefully will result in, a, in, a, in an early morning bite or a, or a bite tonight. I'd expect to start getting some liners um, once they get on it, when you're fishing over this amount of bait, you do get a lot of liners. And once I start getting the liners, then I'd feel as if a take is imminent. I love fishing like this, fish like this for years. Uh, it's my favourite way of fishing on these type of gravel pits where there's quite a few fish. You know, it's not a really low stock like this, there's a decent amount of big fish in here, 30s and big 20s, and, and they'll get through 30 spots of bait really easy. There was quite a few fish here this afternoon as we turned up. 
obviously you've put some floaters out, you put a few spoms out, they're going to do the off. But I'd hope that tomorrow morning when they come back in, they'll come straight looking for this bit of bait out here. It doesn't get overfished this lake as well, so I'd hope that the fish are hungry and uh, they'll get on it. They certainly have in that corner, as we just see as we walked up there, there was a decent amount of fish up there feeding on that little spot. So we're going to tie a rig in a second, get Dan a rod in, he can go and sit on that rod and job done. There, yeah? Go on. Do I need to cut? No, you just lower it, literally lower it, yeah? Take your bow line off, like you're casting. You're just going to underarm it on there, yeah? Right. And just let the lead go down, yeah? Yeah, I reckon that'll be fine, mate. That's where they were. Should we have a little feel and see uh, what it's like down there? Let's have a little feel. What are you doing? Look, the you ain't set the reel up. Yeah, how do you set it up, though? Look, you unwind it, oh. and then wind it. You use your reels, it? That's clean as a bell down there, mate. Go on, put it back down there. That's been clean right off, that has. That's a take, mate, that is, all day long. Lower it and let, let open the bow line. There you are. Yeah, perfect. That's it, mate. That'll rip. That's a guaranteed bite there. Beautiful morning out here. There's, as the sun's coming up, the lake's flat calm. A stunning morning that I, you know, this this is one of my favourite parts about carp fishing. Getting up early when it's when it's days like this, or midsummer, so so beautiful. I haven't had much sleep uh, through the night. Um, I had a few liners myself. Uh, but Dan kept getting liners, he's fishing a little one rod spot up there. So I kept hearing his buzzer going off through the night, so I kept walking down there to see if, if, see if he'd had anything. And then I suppose about four o'clock this morning, I heard his buzzer start screaming off. So I went up there and uh, sure enough, he had a fish on. And uh, I sort of netted it for him, played it out, netted it for him. He's got a nice common in the sling. So we'll do the photos of that soon. So he was happy. It looks a good sort of 26 pound, 27 pound. So it's a good fish for him. Um, like a, any normal 14 year old, he's straight away, first thing he says, I'm starving. So here we are cooking him three eggs and uh, let him have a couple of egg rolls before he does the photos of the fish. I had a few bleeps in the night uh, out here. So there was sink moving around my spot as well. Um, I'm expecting uh, late late morning for my swim to wake up a bit. 
it seemed like in the night, what I could hear, there was a lot of fish moved sort of further down the bank to my left. I could hear them in the night showing. So I'm hoping like yesterday when we got here at about sort of midday, sort of early afternoon, a lot of the fish are up this end. So I'm hoping once that sun gets up, that'll push them back down here and then they're going to come across my bed of bait. I'd put in quite a lot of bait, I suppose, all in all. I must have put 40 or 50 spums out in the end. So there's quite a lot out there for them to get through. Whereas Dan's just fishing over a few scoops down there. So that's what's paid off for him last night. But let's hope this morning we get some more action. I reckon early afternoon again, we might have a chance on the top. So with a bit of luck, we'll see another fish today. But at least we've caught one. So that always makes a session good. You know, we're going to walk away. We haven't blanked. And uh, I'm glad he's caught one anyway. So he'll be made up with his first fish out of Lynch Hill. Well happy with my first Lynch Hill carp, caught him in the margin, around about 27 pound on the strawberry nutcracker wafter. Come on, Stay there. Stay come on. Busy, please wait. Mate. I don't know what's going on. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, nice one. Go on, go on. you can do it again. Do it again. Too tired. You'll be fine. Slept about six hours. Normally sleep about 10. Such a nice fish, mate. Love these old carp. It's a well old carp, that is. It's probably 30 or 30 odd years of age, 35 years old or something, 30 years old. It's got to mid morning. The uh, sun's getting up now sort of about an hour ago, three quarters of an hour ago. I reeled my rods in and I had a walk round with a bucket and scooped a few bits in the margins. And uh, sort of about 10 or 15 minutes ago, it looks like there's a couple visiting a spot that I've been baiting. I baited yesterday as well when we got here. And there's a couple of dark shapes moving over some really light coloured gravel, sort of literally a rod length out. So I've reeled my rods in uh, tied a couple of fresh baits on, strawberry wafters, that seems to be doing the business at the moment. I'm going to head down there and do a few hours down there and lower a couple of rods on them. Uh, Dan's lost another, well he's had another take, he had the common this morning and in about an hour ago his rod ripped off, it took a bit of line off, off him and uh, the hook come out, he hook pulled it. So he's getting action, he put the rod back in there and about 10 minutes ago he had another liner. Um, on that little margin rod, so we expect him to get another bite today and uh, hopefully I can catch one as well. We'll see how it goes. That is as crusty as you like, mate. He 
netted it himself and all. Yeah, brilliant. It's black as anything, mate. It's a big old crusty one. Mate, it's one of the nicest fish I've seen out of here, you know that. Is it? It's like a big, like a scattered linear, but black as anything, old as the eels it is. Yeah, it's been in there, isn't it? We just heard, Wee! I was just feeding three fish up in the other corner. I was up a tree watching them, and I just heard his buzzer ripping, mate. Yeah, what a lake. Isn't it? What a lake. What a lake. You're going to come and see this one? Huh? I'll come and see you soon. All right, then we'll put her in the, in the bag for 10 minutes, yeah? Yeah, man. All right, son. See you soon. Sick fish. The rig we've been having quite a bit of success on, well Dan has, is, is this, it's just a multi-rig, fishing on a heli, heli safe, um, it's just some 20 pound coated braid, um, it's got obviously two, two loops, small loop and a wider loop at this end to attach it um, to, your, to, the, to the leader. And then I'm just using a little ring with a screw on the end. And then I'm screwing just one of these uh, strawberry nutcracker barrel wafters on the end. I'm using a really sharp hook. Um, so I've got a lot of confidence in it. I do like fishing bottom baits, especially when I'm fishing over quite a few baits and I'm fishing over like a dozen spoms on each rod. So yeah, it's just ideal and it's doing the business. And we've had a lot of bites using this rig, so over the last couple of trips. Just make sure that hook point's fine. Seems okay, seems sharp, and that's gonna I'm gonna put this one out there. I've just stuck one out on the spot that I've done well on last year. It's quite deep out there, but there was a few fish out there this morning and in the night last night. But a lot of the fish that I've been seeing have been more to the right in this channel between the island and the bank. So I'm gonna put one down there as well, uh, try and get a decent drop, and then I'll probably put 10 spums on that as well. So I'm gonna spread two rods out. I can't go too far to the right where the fish actually are because of the big willow there, but I'm gonna wade out with my wellies on just to get a little bit further around. Uh, I'm not gonna go that far into the channel, but at the moment, this, um, all these willows along here, there's a lot of fish moving around in front of them. So yeah, hopefully tonight they'll get on the bait. What I'm gonna put out, I'm gonna put back, well, I put back 10 spoms out before I left. I've just been down the shops to get Daniel a bag of um, burger and chips and uh, the right hand rod, then that's gonna go over there. Dan's still where he is in his little corner with one rod. Um, hopefully tonight a few fish start making their way back down to him. Um, he's had his rod out there all day. He hasn't moved it since he had, since he had that mirror. So he's really confident and I reckon Sort of during tonight, we've got a good chance one of these rods in the deeper water, or I reckon again, like his liners was started at a sort of around midnight last night, he started getting liners, so we'll see. Hopefully we can get another fish before we leave. We're gonna go early in the morning, we've got quite a lot to do. So we've got a you know a good 15 hours fishing. And uh, didn't have a lot of sleep last night, so well tired. I'm gonna go and do some work tomorrow at the urban unit and uh, we're going to be well tired but we've had a good trip already uh, considering the couple of fish we've landed. Um, I did lose a good one this afternoon, 
Um, I didn't sort of say about that, but I found about a dozen fish in a corner milling around. I started putting some floaters out to them and they started having them. Um, I went up there, flicked a rod out, uh, missed the bite straight away. Had a sort of, I see a little jerk on my controller, uh, missed the bite and then got the rod back out in place and had a real belt intake. Fish just come up, snatched it, erupted, made loads of noise, a big eruption on the surface. And as I hooked it, it was sort of out in the open water, but it just done a sharp left and really steamed off into the, all this tree line down here. Anyway, I jumped in the lake with my socks on, kicked my shoes off, jumped in the lake with my socks on, got some angle on it, but it got right in the tree and uh, I lost a little bit of milk link. So that was a bit of a, a gutter. Um, I didn't carry on fishing the floaters down there because of the speed that it, it took, took me into that tree. I just thought, you know, I'd rather not hook one than lose another one. So we'll concentrate on the bottom. It's really deep out there. I think when you're coming in that deep water, they've got a lot less chance of kiting into that tree and I'll have a lot more time to, uh, to go out in my wellies or go out in the night and play it and get a good angle on the fish from here. So I should be fine. So, see how we get on tonight, and in the morning we'll uh, we'll hopefully have a few bits to report on. Happy with what I've just done. I've put about a dozen spoms on each rod. Um, I've had a really good couple of good trips in this swim. Uh, last year I'd done a session in this swim and had 10 fish in three nights. Uh, and I had 530s. So I had a real, real top session that I'll probably always remember in my life. Um, and I had fish, I had the half lin, which is one of the oldest fish on the complex. And I had some other really nice fish and all, including like a mid 30 common. I had a lever. I had some really nice fish. So I've got fond memories of this swim. Um, you've got a lovely bit of water out here. You know, there's quite a lot of big, quite a lot of scope. It gets a lot of shade as well, which is nice. So you don't get the sun blaring in you all day. Yeah, it really is a nice swim. So I'm glad to be back in this swim for the night, for my last night of the trip. And uh, hopefully it can carry on being a lucky swim for me. And the move definitely paid off yesterday. So yesterday afternoon, I um, decided to move around into this area of the lake where I'd seen the fish more, more in the, evening, the first night we got here. Uh, moved around yesterday afternoon, put about, I don't know, 12, 12 spots on each rod, split the rods, put a rod down the channel to my right where I was seeing quite a few fish and fish the rod on my usual spot where I've caught from in this swim in the past. Um, you know, about 12 uh, spoms on each rod, just fished a little barrel wafter over the top. And anyway, in, during the night, I've had a, quite a bit of action. All of my, I've had three bites um, through the night. All of them come on that left hand rod. Um, nothing on the right hand rod but all on the left. Uh, got two here in the retainers, two decent fish in the retainers. One of them is a real big common. 
The other one's probably a, a good 20. Uh, the smaller one, I slipped back. Uh, so I've had a busy night. I've had, been awake most of the night. You know, I've had to, every time I've had a take, I've retied a rig, um, then tried to get back to sleep again. Uh, the mozzies and the, or the, the critters around, it was warm yesterday and they were just in there millions. So I'm having to get in the bivvy, zip up to tie a rig, otherwise I'm just getting it alive. I had some real good battles off the fish as well. The bigger fish really, really went for it. Took me all, I hooked him out, sort of out in the middle and he took me right down these margins to the right and he kept going in the trees and crashing in the trees and I could hear him and I was sort of wading out, I was waded right out um, to get some angle on him. And uh, eventually he come out, I was lucky really. I was expecting it to, to lock up at one stage because I could see him crashing around tight to the bank. I could see the rings coming out like tighter than what I was actually standing. Anyway, he tied out in the end and I got him in. Um, the other fish didn't fight nowhere near as hard. Although I did have a bit of a calamity on one of them. Uh, the net wasn't on properly and as I was about to net it, the net come apart and the net sunk in the lake. So there I was in the middle of the night with a rod, with an angry fish on the end, digging around with my arm deep in the lake trying to find the net and then set the net up. Once I found it, I set the net up while holding the rod. But it's been a very eventful night. Um, the fish are still around as well this morning as I sort of woke up at first light. It's just after first light now. And as I woke up, I see straight away a fish stick its head out on my left hand spot. And I see a big patch of fizz out there as well on me. Um, they've also been, been a bit of fizz. I'm looking at a bit of fizz now on the right hand spot. But I haven't even had a bleep on that rod. Everything's come on the left. So it just shows you how zonal carp fishing is. Even though that right hand rod probably had more fish in that zone yesterday. Um, they didn't want to feed there. They've gone out and fed on the spot they like feeding on the ones, the one that I've used in the past. So yeah, they've had a good night. And I reckon we've got probably another hour of fishing before we have to go to work. Um, and see, I reckon we've got a good chance of another one on these rods. It's, I think Dan's been quiet down the bottom end. Um, I've got the remote, he's using one of my buzzers, and I've got the remote in my bivvy, so I'll know if he gets a line or anything. So I thought if he gets a take, I'm, I might need to go and give him an hand in the dark, you know, if he gets a good fish on. But yeah, it's been quite up his end. It seems like all the carp are in this zone here. There's a big zone here, I've been watching them. Sort of the last half hour, I've seen quite a few show, and yeah, it's looking good for that left hand rod. I reckon in the next hour, that there's a chance of that going. But if not, I've had a good night. Here we go. That's the first <coughs> or the biggest fish I had last night. It's a lovely looking common. It's an absolute brutal fight off this fish. And it just run me ragged for quite a while. So, happy days. Strawberry nutcracker wafter. Fished over a mixed bucket of boilie, pellet, and some seed in there as well. Some pigeon conditioner and a little bit of hemp. I love the color of these fish. Got like sort of red coppery colour, aren't they? Yeah, there's another one of the three commons from last night. Another proper dark Linchill gravel pit common. Stunning looking fish. 